Hey guys, Autumn here, and today we are reviewing, wow, that didn't work, um, Jane Davenport watercolors. So I got the neutral set when I went shopping the other day because I had a coupon and I was like, I have been eyeballing these, so we're going to get them. So yeah, let's unbox them and see what they look like. It's small, it's eight colors, I believe, eight half pans. Here it is. It's not super big. It's about the size of my hand, so it's a good travel size uh, compared to my Needin palette. So, there's that. We'll keep that there for comparison's sake. Pops open. So, we have a little swatch sheet. It has the information on it. And it says, Hello artist, this palette of fine watercolors features three primaries, so you can mix any color, and some of my favorite hues. Use the reverse of this card to make a handy reference. Alright. So, there we go. And here are our little pans. We have mango, apple, blueberry, dove, unicorn, raven, vitamin C, sand, buff, spice, kiss kiss, and cocoa. So, We'll compare the size of the half pans in this to the size of one of the half pans in my meat and set. We'll open this one. Ah, there we go. All right. So it's about the same size, it's just a little bit smaller than my maiden half pans. Um, they're the same width, but length is a bit shorter on this one. So I'll unpackage all of these and I will be back in a moment. Okay, so I have unwrapped all of them and we have our lovely pile of wrappers over here. Um, one of the first things that I've noticed about these paints is that they definitely are more of neutral tones, which is a good thing, but they're very dry paints, which isn't bad, but my Sennelia paints and my uh, Winsor Newton paints and those kinds of things, they have some moisture to them and they have a bit of shine. These are shiny, but they're very rough textured and very dry feeling. They feel almost like a sandpaper or a flattened out sandpaper, so like a smoother variant. Um, that's not going to be, that doesn't mean they're going to be bad or not re-wet very well, but I think the colors are very nice as well. Uh, not many sets that I have come with a white and a black. Usually you have to buy them on your own. Uh, this is true for my Sennelier the, and the uh, Windsor Newton sets that I have. So now we'll go ahead and swatch these.
So I just finished swatching all of our colors. Come on camera. So there are all of our colors in their streaky glory. Um, the paper is definitely not watercolor paper. It's like a shiny cardstock almost, or like Bristol paper. So this is not made for watercolors. It's a good basis for what type of color you're getting, but it doesn't give you like the true color that you're getting. But this paper doesn't do them justice and just kind of makes them look streaky. So I will be doing a painting, so I will be back in a little bit for, or I'll be back in a couple seconds with the speed paint. Hey guys, so I finished my painting with the Jane, Jane Davenport watercolors and I wanted to talk back to you guys about all of the cons that I have with this kit as well as the pros. I'm only doing the cons first because I tend to see the cons as something that is extremely important in deciding a kit. So in deciding in buying uh, like watercolors and things. So this is just it doesn't have to do with the fact that I dislike the paints it's just the things that I thought were the biggest issues with it uh, the first issue we'll start right from the beginning is that this paper is not watercolor paper it's just shiny paper to put things on it's pretty but it's not useful in the sense that you're going to get an accurate representation of the colors that you're using and how they interact with watercolor paper my second con is that while these colors are good representations of the color, they do not show how opaque they are. During this painting, I was having a really hard time keeping the color light enough that I could still see my lines underneath it. I understand that I was using a red color race and it was meant to kind of be hidden in the end, but it was really difficult for me to lighten it up enough that it didn't cover everything else underneath it. If you like opaque watercolors, that's good, I suppose, for you, but these are definitely more semi-opaque than transparent or semi-transparent watercolors. I feel like with more practice, I could definitely get the hang of it, but I feel if you're someone who prefers the more transparent watercolors, you'll have to water it down before you even put it on the paper, which adds into another con, which is it took me a very long time to water these down except for the blueberry color. It was very hard for me to re-wet this color for whatever reason, but all the other ones were pretty easily re-wettable. So that's definitely another con is that this particular color is so hard to re-wet. I believe that's all of the cons, unless I'm forgetting something, which I don't think I am. Um, but the opacity and the rewettability, as well as the lack of proper watercolor paper and the mixing potential kind of suck for this kit. But for the pros, the colors in this kit are extremely gorgeous together. You can definitely use this to your advantage if you're a beginner because you have a skin tone type color already mixed and these colors along the bottom could definitely be used as base tones for any skin type that you wanted to get. It's nice and small and it's very portable. You have lots of mixing space inside of this 
and the colors are perfect. You barely have to mix anything depending on what you paint. Perfect for portrait painting as well. Um, I didn't really have to mix any colors at all for this. I mixed an eye color because I wanted green instead of a blue, instead of blue or brown because I felt there was already going to be too much of that color in there. So it's not awful. The colors are definitely a very good mix. Also, the ample mixing space is wonderful for this palette. Although if you do what I did, did and tape down this, you lose a bit of it, but other than that, it's definitely helpful. This removable tray is also phenomenal for this, and it, in it is definitely included in the ample mixing space that you receive. Uh, the paints do do very nice washes when you use a single color, and they are very, very smooth wash. This was just two little layers of orange in a very light fashion, and it turned out wonderful. Out of all of that, the cons and the pros considered, I definitely give this kit a 6 out of 10, and I would recommend it for a travel kit or something you're not going to use all of the time. I would recommend creating your own palette for yourself before using this as your main palette. If you're a beginner though, I would recommend this as a beginning palette because it has uh, colors that you can use to mix skin tones very easily, and it's just a small, easy way to get it. I am not going to say this kit is affordable though, it was $31 at Michael's, and I only purchased it because I had a 50% off coupon, and I was not about to spend $30 on this small tin when I spent $15 on this tin. So that's all I have to say. If, Of course, this is up to you. If you'd like to purchase this kit, I don't dissuade you. I'm just giving you all the information that I thought about this as I was working with this kit. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in another review. Bye, everyone! Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to check out another one over there, and if you want to see the full playlist for this series, check out over here. Thank you for watching, and subscribe if you like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone!